Pastor Ed here from Hope Lutheran Church in Freehold, New Jersey with daily devotions for Saturday, August the 12th, 2023. Uh, we're going into another um, way of looking at the abundant life, another theme uh, entitled, It's About Harmony, Not Balance. And the reading that I'd like to start off with is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, where Paul writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Well, after church one Sunday, a family decided to go for ice cream at Baskin Robbins. And the wife was driving, the husband was in the passenger seat, and Jacob, their young son, was in his car seat in the back. Well, they arrived at the drive through window to receive their ice cream cones, and Paula, the wife, began to hand over the cones one at a time to her husband to hold while she paid for the order. And instead of turning around and handing Jacob his cone, Paula decided to hand all three of them to her husband. Of course, with three cones, only two hands, and no free place to sit anything down, her husband, Jimmy, tried to balance it all. And as he observed later in retelling the story, the key word here was attempt. As he tried to balance two of the cones in one hand so he could take the third, one of them slipped out of his grasp and fell onto his shirt, face down. Half of his chocolate mousse royale was now decorating the front of his shirt. And then as he was trying to pick up the spilled cone, pick the spilled cone back up, Jimmy turned one of the other cones a bit too much, and the entire dip of ice cream fell out of that cone and onto his lap. Half of his wife's pralines and cream was now decorating the upper portion of his pants. And at this point, he turned around and said frantically, quick, Jacob, grab your ice cream before Daddy drops it on his head. And as much as he tried to spill that last cone as well, Jimmy somehow managed to get it into his son's hands intact. The point is that he had too much to handle and just ended up making a great big mess. Oh, well, as he commented later, two out of three ain't bad. And they had a good laugh over the entire situation. We've all been there, haven't we? trying to balance too many things at one time. And typically it's more than just ice cream cones that we're trying to balance. And the stakes are therefore that much higher. I think of my own life. I'm a husband who has a wife who need, with needs of her own and a marriage that needs to be nurtured and cared for. I'm the father of three daughters and they too require my love, attention, and encouragement. I'm a sibling with a brother uh, who lives here in town, although we don't get together probably as often as we should. I'm also the pastor of a 700-plus member congregation, each of whom looks to me for leadership and support and guidance. And finally, I'm an individual who needs to take care of himself as well, especially since having had a heart attack some years ago. And so most days, quite frankly, there simply aren't enough hours for me to do justice to any, let alone all of these important roles in my life. And it's a, I'm sure that it's the same or, or even worse and more complicated for each of you. The great lie, of course, is... Not only that we can have it all in life, which is utterly impossible in and of itself, but that we can also somehow perfect, perfectly balance all of our various roles and tasks and responsibilities. The media certainly doesn't help in this matter either. Every day as we struggle and typically fail to achieve balance in our lives, we see a never-ending parade of commercials and, and news stories and fictional depictions that would have us believe that balance is as simple as making lists, setting priorities, and having discipline. And while these life strategies are certainly helpful, they distract us, however, from the cold, hard truth that perfect balance in this life is an illusion and a harmful and dangerous illusion at that. You know yourself that every time you seek perfect balance in your life and finally seem on the verge of achieving it, something new and or expected takes place to tro totally throw it out of whack. Perfect balance, of course, is literally that condition of stability produced by an even distribution of weight on a scale, a near static state, and therefore where the weights are nearly motionless. But life, as you well know, is simply not like that. Instead, life is much more fluid and full of movement, a never-ending series of people and events and challenges and interruptions. Life is constant motion and the continual adjustment to rapidly changing circumstances. Since perfect balance is not achievable, but nearly everyone is frantically trying to achieve that which is impossible, Many of us are consequently, consequently overcome with worry and anxiety. Have I done enough to fulfill the various roles and responsibilities in my life? Have I made the right choices and decisions? Have I overlooked something or someone important 
What am I missing? Why do I keep trying harder and harder and yet at the same time feel less and less successful and fulfilled? Worry and anxiety over a lack of perfect balance in our lives constantly drains our God-given energies and makes it even harder for us then to fulfill our many important roles and responsibilities. Such worry and anxiety is therefore a sinful waste. A woman who had lived long enough to have learned some important lessons in life once remarked, I've had a lot of trouble, most of which never happened. In other words, she had worried about many things that had never even occurred and had finally come to see the total futility of her anxieties. Somewhere I once read that 40% of what an average person worries about will never actually happen. 30% of what we worry about took place in the past, therefore can't be changed. 12% of our worries result from the criticisms of others that are mostly untrue. 10% of our worries have to do with our health, which only gets worse with stress. And so in the end, only about 8% of our worries are real problems that have to be faced and dealt with. One evening, a bassoon player came up to conductor Arturo Toscanini and nervously said that he could not reach that high E flat. And Toscanini just smiled and interrupted, don't worry, there's no E flat in your music tonight. Many of our worries are precisely like that, unfounded and unnecessary. Connie Mack, one of the greatest managers in Major League Baseball history, was not very successful at first. In fact, in his first three years managing in the big leagues, his teams finished 6th, 7th, and 8th. Finally, however, he discovered the secret. He said, I discovered that worry was threatening to wreck my career as a baseball manager. I saw how foolish it was, and I forced myself to get so busy preparing to win games that I had no time left over to worry about the ones that were already lost. You can't grind grain, he said, with water that has already gone down the creek. Well, our lesson this morning makes a simple, similar point. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, said, Do not worry about in anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And with that, we're going to wrap up our daily devotions for this week. Hope that you can join us for worship tomorrow uh, at 9.30, our live stream service, or catch um, it in person, preferably or watch it sometime during the week as well. And I'll be back uh, to continue this theme and the overall theme of Abundant Life next Tuesday. Until then, take care. Bye.